We're going to go to the phone lines now and talk to a guy who's played in a national championship in New Orleans, former All-American safety at LSU. Craig Stelch joins the show now. Craig, how you doing? Uh, what's going on, Jake? Doing well, man. Glad to have you on. And hey, we were talking before you came on about Mo Hampton, the freshman safety. And I want to talk real quick about the thing that impresses me the most from Mo, and that's the angles that he takes. And somebody inside the Bayou Fort Huddle pointed this out as well. But that's something that Gordy and I have mentioned being on the sideline. When a team runs a stretch or when a team tries to get to the edge, he takes really good angles to make the play. And as a true freshman, you typically – don't see that. So how how do you, how do you work on that as a safety coming downhill? How do you make sure that you have the right angle in the run game? Well, football is a game of angles. I mean, on on both sides of the ball. I mean, it brings up a great point. And uh, I mean, there's drills that we used to work on, just whether it's coming to the sideline, um, where you're focused on the ball carrier coming down, the speed of what you're coming down, making sure you shuffle and don't get your feet crossed over. Um, there's plenty of drills that we used to work, um, you know, as defensive backs to prepare those because. A lot of times you are coming down on an angle. You're coming down from the middle of the field. You're coming down from cover four. And uh, you know you want to get that angle to uh, cut that runner off. Mo Hampton also has allowed Grant Delp and Jacoby Stevens, something we talked about right before you came on, to, to be a little bit more free, to be the guys that kind of line up in different spots, to get on the line of scrimmage, to be a stack back or whatever that might be. How important is it to have a guy that you can trust in the back end to cover you up? And we were talking about Ryan Clark and Troy Palomalo, that relationship they had in Pittsburgh. It's almost you can't do what Troy Palomalo did without a Ryan Clark. No, and you got to be on the same page, you know, and that's something that's special when you're back there in the secondary and, you know, in the, in the guys that when I was there with Curtis Taylor and, uh, you know, being on the same page with your defensive backs, and even with the corners and being able to disguise, but knowing that, that safety is going to be where he needs to be when the ball snaps or vice versa with the corner. And, uh, you know, keeping that quarterback, having to read the defenses, you know, post-snap. So, uh, you know, having that relationship and being on the same page, even though it might not look like it pre-snap, you know, is special. Better flow, you or Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> I actually got a little haircut today. Um, wait, wait, wait. You, We're not you, talking anything crazy, you your... are we? Say that again? We're not talking anything crazy, though. I mean, you still got the no, long no, flow. No, no, Okay. Uh, not not too crazy. But, you uh, you in your prime. <laughs> you in your prime versus Trevor Lawrence now. Oh, I I, I got to go my prime. See, yeah. I still think you're in the prime. I mean, I, I saw you like a couple of weeks ago, Texas A and M game. I mean, you still got it flowing. <laughs> I try to keep up with it, nice, you know. Serious question about Trevor Lawrence. Um, we we saw last time out against Ohio State what he can do with his legs, and I don't think I think we were aware that he was athletic. That, that long touchdown run that he had, I think, kind of opened everyone's eyes to just how athletic he is. When you have a quarterback like that that can hurt you with his legs but really is as dangerous with the arm as he is, what kind of pressure does that put on you as a secondary? How do you uh, accommodate for that with, with a guy that can throw like he does but now we know run like that as well? It makes it very difficult. You know, those are the plays that, as a defensive coordinator, that you can't account for. And you see it happen all the time with Burrow. I mean, the amount of time – I think they're both of them are deceptively fast to where, in a blink of an eye, they're picking up 15, 20 yards, and it's first down and the ball is moving. So it makes it uh, you know, very difficult for a defensive coordinator. It, it's very frustrating for defensive linemen who are, who are giving their all rush to pass every play. And the same with the defensive backs. In the, in the back seven, you could have everything covered, and all of a sudden he slips through a little crack and picks up 15 yards. And, uh, you know, it's one thing I don't – I don't recall a lot of people talking about it with Burrow and, and now with Trevor Lawrence. These guys are, I think, deceptively fast, pick up yardage, and in the blink of an eye, it's 15, 20-yard gain, and then they got the momentum and first down. So uh, it's it's a very difficult for a defense coordinator to cover. Stelt, is that the most demoralizing thing? When you've got everything covered up, and it's third and nine, and you have really good coverage, and all of a sudden, quarterback takes off and picks up 10 or 11? It's It's extremely. I mean – you're out there, the defense coordinator's got a great call, the back seven's covered everything perfect, picked up all the route combinations. And a lot of times, it's not that the defensive line loses rush lanes or creates a gap. These guys are just athletic. They make plays. And, uh, you know, I think they're deceptively fast. And unless you have a spy on them, which you're taking a guy out of coverage and you can't have that every single play, um, it's frustrating. And uh, so, I mean, you got to contain them, keep them in the pocket. You know, and make them pass, and hopefully you have all the right combinations covered. Craig, a lot's been made of Clemson having big physical receivers on the edge. You got 6'4", 210", 215, and 
you know, LSU obviously has played some really good receivers. They've played the Alabama uh, four. They've played every day in practice, maybe the two, three best receivers that, that you'll ever see. Texas had some guys as well. What challenges does that bring LSU when you have receivers that are that big and that physical opposed to quick twitch, fast, straight line guys? You know, I think it's, just, it's, it's getting a jam on with the line of scrimmage. You know, before they get running, before they get going, being physical with them. Um, you know, we have some great corners in Stingley and Fulton and some big time, you know, with Delp in the back who are, who are bigger, relatively bigger guys. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of it is getting a jam on with the line of scrimmage. It takes them not let them get up the line untouched. And, uh, and, and being physical back with them. They've done a great job all year of, of playing physical with the receivers. All right, Craig, last one I've got for you, and we're talking with Craig Sells, former LSU All-American, played seven years for the Chicago Bears in the NFL. But, look, he's a Rumble Raider. He's from New Orleans, and we're not going to allow you to talk about the Rumble Raiders winning the state championship game here on the radio. Congrats on the whole deal. We know, we know. But, no, look, look, you're from New Orleans. You played a championship game in New Orleans. You know exactly what this means to – almost half the team, right? Obviously, a lot of players from the state, but when it's your home city, it means maybe even a little bit more. What was it like for you, and what are these players going to experience playing inside the Superdome, in their home city, in their home state, and playing for it all? You know, it's a dream come true. You know, and I remember when we were, we were living together in our senior year, the National Champion was, the National Champion was in New Orleans. Um, there's not a better place that you could dream of playing a National Championship. You know, an hour down the road from Baton Rouge, all your family and friends are going to be there. And uh, it, it's a great time. You know, the little difference is we had a bowl game. You know, it was our bowl game. So we were there for a full week where right. I think these guys are staying a couple of days before the game. Um, you know, so it, it gives an opportunity to see your family and friends. But, you know, ultimately when, when, when the game day, you know, you got to prepare as if you're playing in Tiger Stadium or playing an away game and focus on the game. But it's a, it's a great blessing to be uh, downtown in New Orleans for the national championship. You going to the game? I am going to the game, yes. All right, I about to say, man, if you don't like walk across the street to the game and you're, you're living in New Orleans, I was going to disown you. Hey, I'm going to try to grab a jersey and a helmet and see if we can there we go. there one last time. Hey, no question about it. Hey, we got to get our, our guy Flynn. He's still looking for a way to get in the game. And I told him, <laughs> if the national championship MVP of the game that we're going to watch can't get into the game, why is anybody allowed in this stadium? I mean, Jake, I was looking. I said, man – 12 years ago, which to the day a couple of days ago, we were walking on to the middle of the field for the coin toss. I was thinking, man, we need to have a little reunion pregame, get the, uh, the 07 captains out on the field for, for the coin toss. Hey, because Ohio State knew they were in a world of trouble when we walked across <laughs> that field, buddy. There's no doubt about it. Clemson would feel the same thing, right? Yes, indeed. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, there he is, Craig Stelz, former LSU All-American, seven-year NFL vet for the Chicago Bears. Good enough to join us here on Hang with Hester.